Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll take a look at vector paths. Specific topics we'll focus on include Bezier curves. Now, when working with a vector path, a straight line is very easy to work with because there's just two endpoints and the line is drawn between them. So to manipulate that line, you just move the endpoints around until you get the line that you like. Usually the challenge when working with vector paths is curved lines or curved pathways. So here's a good example of that. We have two endpoints where a line has been drawn between them, but this line has a really nice delicate curve to it. Now how do we control that curve? And the answer is Bezier anchors. So you can see there are two control points, one at either endpoint, that allows us to manipulate the path between those two endpoints. So those Bezier anchors, or those control points, allow us to control two things. The angle of the curve, or the direction that the curve is going, as well as the amplitude, or the, uh, the height of the curve. So while this is a really nice image to look at, I think it's much easier to understand Bezier curves if we manipulate one. So let's switch over to Flash. And I have a line drawn here. Now again, straight lines are very easy. I can just manipulate the endpoints to change this path. What I want is a curved path. So I'm going to take this path and bend it. And when I take my sub-object selection tool and I click on one of the endpoints, you'll see that there are some Bezier anchors controlling this pathway. Now again, they can control the angle or direction of the curve. So I'm going to take these paths, these anchors, I'm going to switch them. So you see how I'm now leaning to the left, or I can grab both of these anchors and change them so my curve leans to the right. So that's how you can control the angle or direction. You can also control the amplitude. So I'm going to take this and reduce the amplitude. You notice the height of my curve is reducing significantly on the right side. And if I do the same on the left side, it'll reduce it even more. So that's the height or amplitude of our curve. If I take these Bezier anchors, I can switch them. So you notice the direction of my curve, the angle of my curve change. And here I'm going to mirror that on the opposite side. So I want the amplitude to be about the same. So I'll stretch this control point out. Now I have a nice delicate curve that goes in two directions. All right. So that's the basics for manipulating a curved pathway. But what if I have two pathways that are connected to one another? What does that look like? So I'm going to draw two lines. All right, so these are straight lines. And again, straight lines are very easy to manipulate because I can just grab any of the anchor points and move them. For a curved pathway, let's convert this middle anchor point. You can see our Bezier anchors. I'm going to use my sub-selection tool, and again, I can control the curve, and I can control the amplitude of that curve. But you'll notice this is three points, and the point right here is controlling the path coming into and going out of that single point. All right, so it's actually controlling both sides. Now, right now, the two Bezier anchors are locked. You notice how when I move one, the other moves with it to control the angle. And often that's a good thing. We want a nice smooth curve coming through this point, and you want those anchor points locked or those control points locked. If I hold down the Alt key, on a Mac it's also labeled the Option key. If I hold down Alt and I grab one of these anchors, you'll notice I can break that connection. And this allows me to manipulate that pathway independently on one side of the point from the pathway on the other side of that point. So now that I've sort of broken the connection between those two pathways, it opens up all kinds of options in terms of manipulating this pathway. If I want to return it, I can just swing this one anchor point out until it lines up parallel with the other one, and you'll see how it locks together automatically. So it's very easy to lock the two anchor points together. It's also easy holding Alt to break the two anchor points so you can control the pathways independently of one another. This is the basics of manipulating a vector shape. Now obviously it's much more complex than that when you're dealing with a large complex shape. When you're only dealing with one or two lines it's actually very simple. So a really good pro tip when you're getting started with vector shapes 
keep your shapes as simple as possible. As few pathways as possible makes it much, much easier to control your shape. The more pathways you start adding to it, the more anchor points you add to it, the more Bezier curves that you add to it, the more complex your vector shape is going to be to work with. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.